tell me you went to a really toxic high school without telling me you went to a really toxic high school. So I went to the bathroom in the middle of physics class. I go in and I see this girl and she's really not doing well. She looks nauseous. I say, are you okay? She says, no, I'm fine. I'm just gonna like chill in here for a while. I said, okay. So I left and then I thought about her and I was like, oh my God, I need to go back there. So I go back and I see all these girls from my high school pointing and laughing at her and she's frothing at the mouth, literally having an OD reaction to something. I pick this girl up, I carry her to the nurse's office and I'm like, nurse, what do I do? Like, do we call 911? Like, I, I had no idea. I was in shock. And the nurse was like, Yasmin, don't waste your time on people that aren't worth it. And I was like, what? Story time. As I've mentioned about like 50 times now, I used to go to private school before I went to high school. And private schools can get away with pretty much anything. We had this thing called the late bus and it would take you home if you stayed late for after school activities or something. And to get to and from our school, you have to go up this very steep, windy, narrow road. And so they had this bus driver that everybody loved. He was a really nice guy. He was just one of those people who didn't know when to not do something or like personal boundaries. So every time we would go home, he would break really hard and then start swerving and be like, oh, we're crashing and everybody thought it was really funny. He would also do it on the highway. This one time I fell out of my seat and I smashed my face on the floor of the bus. And I went home and I told my dad and he was so furious and he called the school and I got the man in trouble and I didn't mean to get him in trouble. But then the next day, everybody on the bus was like, hey, can you pretend we're crashing? And he was like, no, I, I can't do that anymore. I felt so bad. Like, should I feel bad though? So my mom called the school and she was like, hey, my daughter's not gonna be in today. She has to go to the doctor. So I wasn't gonna be there for like my first two classes. And of course, of course, I had a test in my first class, which I obviously could not be there for. So as soon as I get home, it's after school, all my classes are done, I take the test. And I only got three wrong, hallelujah! So my friend texts me, she's like, okay, like, let me, let me, let me know your score. So I go on there, and it says I got a zero out of 40. Zero, an F, zero. But I go on there, and I only got three wrong. So I check uh, power school, it's like a place where you can check your grades. And she put the test in as an F. So now I have a 23 in my class, and I emailed her, right? And she said, you weren't in class to take the test, so it's an F. Throughout elementary school, I would always be that kid who'd be picked up last by their parents. It could be freezing cold, and my mom would show up two hours later. My teacher already knew this routine, so 30 minutes after school, she'd make me wait in the office. And there was always crazy stuff going on in the office. It'd either be a kid, a parent, or a staff member yelling in the office, sometimes all at the same time. This one time, I was sitting in the office next to the worst kid in our grade. You know, the one who would always get in trouble? Let's call him Jose. Apparently, he was in a big fight, <laughs> and they were waiting for the other kid to come with his parents. However, the secretary lady thought the fight was between me and Jose. So where are your parents? <laughs> she asked me. Oh, my mom won't be here in a while. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm always here though. I'm a regular. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, look at you all smart. Always that snap. Lo and behold, my mom walks in and the secretary starts snitching. Like she pulls a 6'9". Uh, ma'am, your son was in a big fight with this other kid and we're here to figure out their punishments. And my mom was furious. <laughs> There's more, like for part two. So this staff lady tells my mom that I was in a quote-unquote fight and my mom began to yell at me in the office. Mijo, ¿por qué estabas peleando con este niño? I, I wasn't, I tell her. And Jose, who was actually in the fight, was all like, ooh. <laughs> so I tell Jose, dude, it wasn't between us. Please tell her. Yeah, it actually wasn't. <laughs> Whatever, at the end, she calms down. On the ride home, though, my mom is asking me questions as if I was actually in the fight. So if he punched you, would you have punched him back? Uh... Conteste! Um, um, sure, sure, yeah, I would. And when I said I would, my mom summoned her. Chancla. Did he use this? So now I'm in trouble for an imaginary fight. And I'm trying to unsummon her chancla. I'm like, no, 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 never mind. You know I don't condone violence. I know, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll do the dishes when we get home. Always hit her with the chores. She finally calms down and puts the chancla away for next time. Ooh, that was the last time I was ever back in the office. I'd just rather wait in the cold after that. By the way, thank you guys so much for all the recent love. I wanted to make this story just one video, but it was way too long. And I did not think part one was going to blow up that quickly. So thanks for your patience. I'm going to tell you guys about the time I let my entire fourth grade class down. You think I'm exaggerating? You know, I stay up at night and I cringe at this. It's just, why did I do this? Honestly, I guarantee you none of them care. None of them remember. But I remember. It's honestly not even that big a deal. But it is to me. Okay, let's get into it. Picture this. Little fourth grade Joe excited to be going to school because it's December. And what does December mean? Christmas parties. That's one of the things that I miss about elementary school. All of the fun holiday parties. When I become a high school teacher, I promise to bring back the parties. 
Anyway, my teacher announced we were having a Christmas party. Everyone's like, yay! Okay, but we need people to bring snacks. She let kids volunteer what kind of snacks they could bring. Some kids said they could bring chips. Some kids said they could bring cookies, but there were no drinks. And then I suggested, what if we have hot chocolate? Everyone's like, yeah! My teacher's like, that's a great idea, Joe Zadak. Are you able to bring that? Yeah, I can bring hot chocolate. My entire class cheering. She was like, okay, follow for part two. Okay, so this is part two of me letting my class down in fourth grade. So you already know I was assigned the hot chocolate. Super excited, super happy. I had such a big job, big responsibility. And I can't stress this enough, I was the only one bringing the hot chocolate. So when I got home, I asked my mother, Mom, where's the hot chocolate? She goes, right there. So I grab it, and my little dumb mm, said, this isn't good enough. It was the powdered hot chocolate. You know the ones that come in the can? And I wanted the packets with the marshmallows. So I got really upset. This isn't the hot chocolate. This isn't the one I promised I'd bring. Go! And in my brain, I rationalized that if I couldn't bring the best hot chocolate, then I wouldn't bring any at all. I ended up bringing chips ahoy. But that's not the worst part. I walked in, my teacher had prepared a bunch of hot water in cups. It was this giant machine filled with boiling hot water and she was stirring it. She looks at me walk in and go, hey, did you bring the hot chocolate? <laughs> no, but I brought cookies. Joe! When I was in high school, we had Spirit Week. And one year we had a meme day. And your boy wore a T-Rex costume. It was awesome. <laughs> but there were some challenges. I remember that in the morning, I had gym class. So aren't you gonna put shorts on? My friend asked me. Bro, how am I gonna put shorts on? But changing wasn't the biggest challenge. You wanna know why? Because we played football. I could not catch the ball with my stubby arms. And people would step on my tail to stop me. After gym class, I had English and forgot I had to do a presentation that day. So what did your boy do? I presented in my T-Rex costume. And I even think I got bonus points. And also, when I went through doors, I had to put my whole head down to get through. And if that wasn't it, wanna know what my greatest struggle of the day was? Every day after lunch, the school gave us 10 minutes to go outside and chill for a bit until our next class. And during this little time period, so many people wanted to race me. I guess seeing a kid running in a T-Rex costume gives off serotonin. <laughs> A school bully poured super glue in this girl's hair, but it's what she did after that will shock you. Hannah was just like any other girl in grade 10, but there was one guy at school who just would not leave her alone. Every day he would harass her, spread rumors about her, and even tripped her in the hallways. But one day it went too far. Before class one day, the school bully set up a hot bucket of super glue above the doorway so that Hannah would get pranked. A few minutes later, when Hannah walked in, she was covered in glue and collapsed to the floor. She woke up hours later in the hospital with third degree burns across her body. Even after she recovered, she was forced to shave her head as she was no longer able to grow hair. The school bully got off with a slap on the wrist and an in-school two-day suspension. Hannah was furious. I mean, her life was ruined and this bully got off completely scot-free. Even though she was bursting with rage, she decided to contain it and vowed to get the ultimate revenge on this kid. You won't believe this. Follow for part two. You part two. Hannah was enraged. All she could think about was the pain she was going to inflict on this bully. First, she went through all the social media to see if there was anything she could expose him with. But after going through thousands of posts, Hannah came out empty-handed. But at that exact moment, she thought of something that would end his career. Before I continue, I just found this game where you can grow your own baby. Links to my bio if you want to try too. The next day at school, Hannah got all her friends to wear hidden cameras to record and expose the bully once and for all. They did this for two weeks before compiling all the footage and uploading it to YouTube. The video went viral and when news got out, the bully was expelled and sent to juvie. A Story time of the weirdest thing I ever did at school. Now you can't tell me that you never did anything weird in primary school. So I was just chilling with my best friend Olivia and we were in the last class of the day. I must have been nine years old and yes, that is quite old. Anyways, we're partnered together doing some sort of project I don't really remember. Every single day we would both bring in a brand new toy. Now this time round, I had decided to bring some of my Polly Pockets. They were my absolute favourite. And I'm sure we've all done this in primary school, but I used to set up like a little table and chair using my stationery for my Polly Pockets. I don't quite remember how this came about, but hear me out. All I remember is the teacher was not in the classroom and I was left with a pair of scissors. And before you know it, my Polly Pockets were cut into loads of tiny pieces. It gets weirder. I then remember both me and my friend putting the pieces of Polly Pocket into our mouth and swallowing them like tablets. Now I don't know if Mama Sandra needed to put more chicken dinosaurs in the oven for when I got home or what. I have no explanation, don't know why I did it, and don't know if they're still inside of me or not. 